Welcome to our lecture online. Our next problem is another interesting problem. Let's say that we have a big brass bar that are connected to two, two very strong brass anchors like this. And let's say it's one continuous piece. And then we have two steel wires right here. Now, if we heat up the brass, the brass will expand and try to become longer. And those steel wires, of course, will try to prevent that from happening. And you'll have a stress buildup. Now, stress is force per unit area. Now, we don't know the cross-sectional area of the brass. We don't know the cross-sectional area of the wires. But the question asks the following. Find the stress in the steel wires. Assume constant temperature for the steel wires. In other words, we don't need to know the cross-sectional area of the brass or of the wires because we're looking for the stress, which by definition is force per unit area. Okay, so knowing that, and then also, of course, knowing that the coefficient of linear heat expansion for brass is 1.87 times 10 to the minus 5. There's different kinds of brass, of course. There's different numbers. We'll just pick that one. And that the uh, Young's modulus for brass, which is the ratio of the stress over the strain, is about 9 times 10 to 9 times 10 to the 10 pascals. Pascals is a newton per square meter. So let's try to find that. The first thing we're going to do is figure out when the temperature changes from 0 degrees centigrade to 300 degrees centigrade, how much will the length of that brass bar increase? So we know that the length final equals the original length plus the change in the length. So that would be equal to the original length plus the original length times the coefficient of heat expansion times the change in the temperature. So this here is the change in the length. So we have the final length will be equal to the original length times 1 plus the change in the length. And so in this case, that would be equal to length final equals length initial times 1 plus the initial length, well, we factor that out, times alpha, and uh, let's see here, delta L, well, that's not really correct here. Let me, technically, I should have written alpha times delta T, because that's the more correct form of the equation since I already factor out an L sub naught. So I got to be careful what I write down there. Since I factor out an L sub naught, I have the two remaining terms right here. So let's write those down. Uh, 1.87 times 10 to the minus 5 per centigrade degree. And then we multiply that times 300 centigrade degrees like that. And so then continue up here since I run out of room down there. Length final equals length initial times 1.87 oh, 1 e to the 5 minus times 300 equals 5.61 times 10 to the minus 3. 1 plus. So it would be L final equals L initial times 1 plus 00561. 10 to the minus 3 moves it over three places. There we go. So now we have the change in the length. Now let's try to find the stress. Because notice from this equation right here, we can now write that the stress is equal to the Young's modulus times the strain. And so the stress is equal to Young's modulus, and the strain by definition is the change of length over the original length. Okay, so then we can say that the stress is equal to 9 times 10 to the 10 pascals, multiplied times the change in the length, the change in the length would be 5.61 times 10 to the minus 3 times length initial, because we have to multiply this times this to get the change in length, divided by the original L initial. And of course, you can see that L initial cancels. And we can then see that the stress is equal to times 9e e to the 10th equals 504. So 5.05 or 5.05 times 10 to the 6th, so 5.049. Pascals, that would be newtons per square meter. What if we want to convert that to pounds per square foot or pounds per square inch? All right, let's go pounds per square foot. 
So that would be equal to 5.049 times 10 to the 8 newtons per square meter. And now we convert to pounds from newtons. And one pound is 4.448 newtons. So that's our first conversion. And square, square meters to square feet. So we want square feet at the bottom, one meters at the top. One foot is 0 0.3048. Of course, we have to square that if we convert. Oh, that's a tiny two here. Let me make it a little bigger. There we go. So that gives us the strain or the stress in this case. Better write down stress in terms of pounds per square foot. So uh, we divide by 4.448. And then we multiply times 0 0.3048 squared equals, and notice we now get 1.055 times 10 to the seventh pounds per square foot. Now typically we write to write it in terms of pounds per square inch. So let's go up here. So I have stress which is equal to 1.055 times 10 to the 7 pounds per square foot. Now we're going to convert that to square inches. Of course, one foot is 12 inches, and then we have to square that. So one square divided by 12 squared, so divide this by 144. So that means that the stress can also be expressed in terms of 73,200, 73,200 pounds per square inch. And so there we go. We have stress in terms of newtons per square meter or stress in terms of pounds per square inch, whichever units you like best. That is how it's done.